Have you ever wondered why some phone chips just suck? There are companies with over 30,000 people dedicated to designing system on chips and sometimes they still design and make bad chips. And here are the reasons why. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Zero Views Tech. If you like learning stuff like this, why not subscribe? It's free. Now, this question has always been in the back of my mind, but after I tested a cell phone with a system on chip made by an unknown manufacturer and it kind of sucked, I asked myself the question, why is it so hard to make a good system on chip for a cell phone or tablet? And here are the reasons why. Now, if you don't know what an SOC or a system on a chip is, let me elaborate very quickly. It's basically an entire desktop shrink raid onto a single chip. Yes, that's an oversimplification, but let me elaborate just a little bit more. Most people think a system on a chip is just a CPU, but a system on a chip is just that, it's a system. And a system is composed of many parts. For example, there's a CPU, graphics chip, camera processing chip, network modems for 3G LTE, audio chip to listen to stuff, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, and a ton more components. So in order to create a system on a chip for a cell phone, you need to be experts on not only the CPU, but the graphics, network modems, audio, and a ton of more other stuff just to make an SOC. So the top SOC manufacturers in the world are Qualcomm, which everyone is familiar with, Apple, who makes SOCs for their iPhones, Samsung, who makes their Exynos line of SOCs for their Galaxy phones, and finally Huawei, who makes the Kirin series of chips for many of their phones as well. Now, after these top tier manufacturers come the mid tier ones, namely MediaTek, who is well known for making Helio line of processors, Intel, who makes some Atom SOCs for a few cell phones like ASUS Zenfone line, and tablets like Microsoft Surface. A quick mention for Nvidia, who used to make Tegra chips but have since stopped, and also AMD, who mostly makes enterprise ARM chips. Following these mid-tier SoC manufacturers, there are a couple of more low-end ones. You might have heard of some of them. For example, All Winner. They make SoCs mostly for ARM-based TV boxes and tablets, but lately haven't found their way into anything popular. There's also Xiaomi, who is a huge phone manufacturer who recently started their own in-house SoC named Surge. And finally, Spreadtrum makes a couple of SoCs here and there, but they haven't been great or very popular at all. So let's start with the reasons why it's so hard to make a good system on a chip. Number one, a system on a chip is basically a desktop shrink ray down into the size of a penny. So you not only have to be experts in every aspect of the system on a chip, but you also have to fit them all onto the size of a penny. Think about how a desktop works. Each component of the desktop is designed by a different manufacturer. For example, Intel and AMD make CPUs. Nvidia and AMD makes graphic cards. Companies like Kingston, G-Skill, and Corsair make RAM. And all these companies have to worry about is their own component and to make sure their component fits into a standard slot on a motherboard. However, if you design a system on a chip, you either have to design or buy all these components, a CPU, graphics card, RAM, make them talk to each other, and then cram them onto a chip smaller than an SD card. So yeah, it's multidisciplinary, complicated, and space constrained. Number two, you have to work around existing patents. If something happens to be patented, you either have to stop doing it that particular way, or you have to pay the company a one-time fee or a royalty for the right to use it. There are so many patents related to system on chips that it's not even funny. There's power management patents, video playback patents, and network LTE patents to name a few. So I'm sure some of you know that Qualcomm sued Apple because they claimed that Apple was using their LTE, their power saving, and their camera patents, and then Apple countersued Qualcomm over a bunch of other stuff, and it's really just too complicated to follow. But suffice it to say, these are huge companies with huge bank accounts. I mean, like Apple has $270 billion in cash just sitting there waiting to do nothing. If you are a smaller company without the cash pile of Apple to pay up, or you don't have enough engineers to do research and development, so you're kind of stuck. You either have to use a less efficient method that's not patented, or just give up and do something else. Number three, time to market and time in market. First of all, it takes a long time to design an SOC. You might not see the impact in real life, but there are a ton of people working together at the same time to integrate all aspects of the system on chip together, as opposed to say Intel, who only worries about the CPU for the desktop side, and the CPU is basically a giant calculator. SOC manufacturers have to ensure crosstalk, they gotta get rid of wire delays, and deal with general design complexity that comes with integrating all these parts together. 
Now let's say a company like Qualcomm does finish their chip and pushes it to market. Now how long does that particular chip stay in market before it's taken over by something new? Let's take the Snapdragon 820 from the Galaxy S7 generation. This chip was announced March 2015 and the first phone to use it was the Leiko Le Max Pro launch February 23rd, 2016. And when was the new Snapdragon 835 launch? November 2016. That's less than two years so the system on the chips don't stay in market for very long before the next generation comes up. So these companies really have to sell a ton of chips to cover their huge development costs. Number four, battery life. So it would be a lie to say that companies do not care about power consumption on desktop and laptops because they do. But it also would not be right to say that power consumption is as important on desktops and laptops as it is on phones and tablets because you have so much more space to play around with on desktops and laptops. So in the phone and tablet space, increasing performance per watt is the name of the game. Many phone enthusiasts know about the Snapdragon 625 chip. It's not the most powerful chip in the world, but it's probably one of the most power efficient commercial smartphone chips to be used in a long time. So with this chip, if you have a 3000 mAh battery, you can easily get 10 plus hours of screen on time, for example, on the Xiaomi Mi A1. And if you want 15 hours of screen on time, go with the 4000 mAh battery on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X. Now, what about if you want a 24 hours of screen on time, what about a 5300 mAh battery on the Xiaomi Mi Max 2? There's so much complexity in optimizing for power consumption that I probably won't spend too much time on this, but let me just say something really quick. So you can make a processor that's super fast but leaks voltage like crazy, which means that power is wasted. And for example, if you have an Intel processor for a desktop that does that, that's not as important because you have a power supply plugged into the wall with constant power, so you don't really care. Or you can make a processor slower but super tight so you don't waste any power. And that is exactly what the Snapdragon 625 does. And that is exactly what many companies are doing or trying to do for phone chips. And it's hard to make something like that. And it's even harder to make something fast and tight. Number five, manufacturing. If you are not familiar with how manufacturing processes work, let me give you a simple example. If NASA asks your factory for 5,000 volts to use in their space shuttle that are exactly two centimeters tall, they cannot be one nanometer taller or shorter, they gotta be exact or the shuttle is going to explode. What are you gonna do? You have a few options. One of them is you can either hire a bunch of guys to manually make 5,000 volts exactly two centimeters tall. Now that's a huge waste of money, right? What about another option? You can start up your assembly line, make 5 million volts that are not all exactly 5,000 volts, and then what you can do is you can hire maybe one or two guys and pick out the best 5,000 bolts that are exactly two centimeters tall and sell them to NASA. Now, what about the rest of the bolts? They're not gonna go to waste, right? So you sell the rest to Home Depot or OBI for like very cheap. Obviously, everyone picks a second option because you make a lot more money that way. Now, it's the same concept for system on chips and a lot of other computer components. You make 5 million system on chips and you sell the best ones. However, the difference is that unlike screws, there are some system on chips that you just cannot sell and are wasted because your manufacturing process just isn't refined enough yet. So after you throw away the bunch of chips, you go back and you tweak the process a little bit here and a little bit there. Then you make 5 million more, you waste a bit less, you go back and tweak again and you repeat the process. So this is very capital intensive. What do you think about the reasons I mentioned above? This is my first time doing a video like this, so if I get anything wrong or forget something, please let me know in the comments down below so I can improve for the future. If you like this video and want to learn more about technology, why not subscribe? It's free. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.